guys, the topic of today are monitors to use for our retro gaming PCs. We have a nice selection here, starting with the CRT monitor, the gold standard, no matter what resolution, you will get a very nice image, but they're getting harder to find, more expensive, and many of them are failing, so it's just a matter of time we need to use modern alternatives. So over the years, I have accumulated some LCD monitors and there are important differences that you need to pay attention to when picking one for retro PC gaming. So what I have planned in this video is, first we will work with each of these monitors in Windows and DOS and I will talk about the pros and the cons. And then later in the video, I'll give you some general suggestions for what to look out for. Let's look at this monitor. This one is from Samsung and it's a 24 inch widescreen monitor. It has a native resolution of 1920 by 1200 and the beauty of the screen is, well, it's huge. So here we have a 4x3 image on the screen and measuring it, yeah, that's 21 inches. So that's a huge monitor in terms of 4x3 aspect ratio. It supports 1600 by 1200, which is a very high resolution. I call it the 4K of the retro PC gaming world. Many games support it, but not all of them. Here we are in the game Shogo. This one supports 1600 by 1200. And what we can see is a very high detail. So the image is really sharp and crisp. The challenge is we need a high performing computer. So here I have a GeForce FX 5200. Even with a 128 bit memory interface, this video card struggles. It's probably sitting around 30 FPS, maybe less. And the other issue is that the text can be quite small. You can see it here. So these older games, they traditionally don't scale the font size to take into account high resolution monitors. So you might find the text a little bit on the small side. When I bought this monitor, I had a choice buying one with an IPS panel or a TN panel. And I recommend monitors with TN panels. And that is a little bit different to these days. Modern monitors can do high refresh rates even with IPS and VA panels. But older monitors, if you have an IPS panel, they're usually locked at 60 hertz and they can't do smooth 70 hertz scrolling under DOS and don't support high refresh rates. And also the TN panels are a little bit faster, less ghosting, and that was more important for me with gaming in mind. These monitors were quite popular in the business world. They've got height adjustments, you can rotate them, and they usually are built quite well to a higher standard compared to some of the smaller ones. At 1024 by 768, the image is more soft. This is the negative of LCD panels with the scaling going on. The aspect ratio works across all the resolutions. To calibrate your monitor, a tip under Windows 98, click Start Shutdown. There will be a grid pattern in the background and then you can press the Auto Adjustment button. Most monitors have a button at the front to do the Auto Adjustment, but not all of them. For some, you need to go into the menu, which can be quite annoying. I'm connecting with the VGA cable. What I've found is that it exposes more resolutions and also more refresh rates. On this monitor, for example, connecting with DVI, it will not expose 1600 by 1200. You need to add a custom resolution to get that going, whereas with VGA, it just works. The monitor does quite well under DOS. Here we have a classic DOS game running at 320 by 200. And yeah, it does a fairly good job at displaying DOS games. The image is huge, so 20 inch in 4x3 is absolutely massive and a game like this you know you would have a 386 at the time so maybe a 15 inch screen so that can look a little bit weird in the beginning however as you get older at least for me my eyesight not that great anymore so i actually really like a nice big screen the next monitor is much smaller and I kept the distance from the camera the same so you can really compare how the monitors compare in terms of size. We're running 1024 by 768 and you can see it stretches the entire 
screen, but it has a button here, and that's very unique. Push this button, and it sets it to 4x3. The native resolution is 1366 by 768, and we can use 1024 by 768 and get native 1x1 pixel mapped image. And this is the highlight of this monitor. In terms of the 4x3, ratio image I'm measuring around 15 inches so you will get the equivalent to a 15 inch 4x3 monitor 1024 by 768 but the benefit a slightly more modern panel. Here we are back in Shogo and at 1024 by 768 well the game is much easier to run it doesn't need a very advanced video card so that is one of the benefits. Now, text is a little bit easier to read. However, we have a smaller screen size now, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Another highlight of this monitor is it supports high refresh rates, 75 hertz, so that makes Windows gameplay just a little bit smoother. Under DOS, again, we have four by three aspect ratio, so we can just push that button and I'll show you again how this monitor easily supports the 4x3 aspect ratio. The size is more suitable for DOS gaming, I believe, compared to larger monitors, because it's the equivalent to a 15 inch size. Now, in terms of the quality of this panel, unfortunately, this is the bad news. These type of monitors, they're bottom of the barrel, and they usually put quite basic panels into them, especially the backlight has a little bit of bleeding going on, so don't expect anything high-end. And again, this is a TN panel, so quite fast. You're not gonna get any ghosting or blurring for gaming. I think perfectly acceptable. The next monitor size, this one is really popular. This is a 19 inch monitor. So let me just double check. Yes, it is. And at first you might think, oh yeah, this is a four by three ratio, beautiful. But unfortunately, the specifications, this is a 1280 by 1024 resolution, and this has a ratio of five by four, not four by three, and that causes a few issues. It means that games that are, you know, meant to be played at the four by three aspect ratio can look a little bit weird, especially under DOS, the ratio will look uh, vertically stretched a little bit, so people, for example, and faces will be a little bit taller and thinner, under Windows, many games do cater for that resolution, but not all of them. However, the difference in ratio between 4x3 and 5x4, it is quite small, so chances are it's not too big of a deal for you. This monitor again has a TN panel, which means it supports high refresh rates at 1280 by 1024. Again, 75 hertz is available and will give, give you a smoother gameplay under Windows. Here we are in Shogo and this game does support 1280 by 1024 and you get really nice detail. In terms of resolution, this is quite high. In terms of performance, the GeForce FX does a fairly good job running this game, um, but it might be borderline. Some of the lower end video cards will definitely struggle at this resolution and you need a fairly capable video card to drive it. What is really good about this monitor is, well, it's not a widescreen and many of you hate playing on a widescreen monitor with those black bars. Me personally, I don't mind, but to many of you, you prefer a squarish screen. The other benefit of this one is you will find them readily available on the used market and at good prices. And these were also very popular with business customers. So height adjustments, rotation, that's all available. And again, you have a choice with panels, technologies. I, again, I would recommend TN panel, higher speed, less blurring and higher refresh rates. Here we are in DOS and the main issue here is the five by four ratio. So the objects are stretched in the vertical, they are thinner and taller. And if you're really picky about that and you know what to look for, that might be a turnoff. But for many of you out there, I know you're using such a monitor and you are perfectly fine. And yeah, I must say the image is beautiful. The scaling is not too bad, maybe even better on these monitors compared to the widescreen 
displays. So all in all, under DOS, they also work well. And with the VGA connector supporting the 70 Hertz and with the TN panel also having smooth scrolling at 70 Hertz for those DOS games. And here we have the good old CRT monitor, the gold standard. This is a 17 inch screen. We're running at 1024 by 768. And these monitors, what they are so good at is they run any resolution and the image will look absolutely beautiful. There are no issues to do with scaling. They're also very flexible when it comes to the refresh rate. So DOS games at 70 Hertz is not a problem. In fact, they can run at higher resolutions compared to the LCD monitors that we're looking at in this video at 1024 by 768. This one can go up to 85 Hertz. Here we are in the game Shogo. We're running at 800 by 600. And one thing the CRT monitor does really well is make low resolutions look really nice. So here you don't have to be playing at 1600 by 1200. Even at lower resolutions, the image will look nice and crisp. Yeah, that is the magic of the CRT monitor. DOS gaming is where the CRT monitors really excel, making low resolution games look absolutely stunning. And this is where they have the biggest edge compared to LCD monitors. One of the downsides of the CRT monitor is pricing. They're not easy to find. And of course, their reliability, they have analog parts in there that can fail over time. And finding someone that can repair them, it's gonna be expensive and difficult. Also, they flicker and a lot of people are sensitive to that. Under Windows, you can crank up the refresh rate, but under DOS, 60 Hertz and 70 Hertz, you're stuck with that. And if the flickering annoys you or you're sensitive to that, then that can be quite a downside. So we had a look at the specifics of the monitors that I kept around and the reasons why I like working with them. Now, just a few general tips what I recommend. In terms of panel, I recommend going with a TN panel. They're faster for gaming, that's a nice benefit. Yeah, they don't have the most accurate colors and there are some issues with viewing angles, but really it's not a big deal. These monitors are not too large and we are not using the whole widescreen area of the screen. So the viewing angles, it's not such a big deal. But one of the advantages of the TN panels is higher refresh rate support. Under DOS, we get 70 Hertz support for that nice smooth scrolling in platforming games, shooting games, and also uh, demos. And under Windows, well, 75 Hertz high refresh rate gaming, it is a thing. It's around 20% smoother and definitely something you will notice. When you're looking for a monitor, study the user manual. Look for things like aspect ratio control. Many monitors don't have it, but if it has one, it is mentioned usually in the user manual. Many monitors have a dedicated 4x3 aspect ratio button like this Philips screen, but I've also seen BenQ monitors that have such a feature, but in other monitors, it's hidden somewhere inside the menu. And other monitors don't do it, for example, under DOS, you will get an ugly stretched screen, but they do scale 4x3 under Windows. So testing is what you need to do in the end to really find out if the screen is suitable. And that might involve rocking up with a, an old laptop with a VGA output uh, to the seller, testing the screen on the spot and seeing if it's suitable. I recommend using the VGA connection even under Windows. Don't be afraid about getting a blurry image. It's not the case. Some of these high-end video cards have a digital analog converter running at over 300 megahertz. It's much, much better than what we had with an S3 Trio uh, or some of those uh, graphics cards. So you will get a nice sharp image. Make sure you calibrate it with the auto adjust button under Windows 98 or using a test pattern and also the VGA connection, it will expose more resolutions and also a, a wider variety of refresh rates. For example, on the uh, 24 inch Samsung screen, the 1600 by 1200 resolution does not uh, appear with the DVI connection, only with VGA. So it's little, little aspects like this. So it's a blanket statement, go with VGA, you will have an easier retro life.
especially under DOS using the DVI connection you will get 60 Hz and some games synchronize to the refresh rate and will therefore run slower and the music will play slower. So again, another reason to stick with VGA. So the takeaway is there are lots of differences between the individual models and you will not find a perfect monitor for every situation, especially with the LCD monitors because we have a fixed resolution that sort of locks you in which operating system, what game you can ideally play on such a screen. But even with CRT monitors, there are differences. For example, when I had my first 386 machine, well, the standard was a 14 or 15 inch monitor. But then under Windows 98 in the year 2000, you would have a 19 inch screen. So playing an old DOS game on a 19 inch CRT also looks a little bit off. And um, those are also aspects that you need to consider. So the choice of the monitor is actually quite an important one because it really determines the look and the feel of the game. Under Windows, the situation is not too bad. You have a couple of choices, 1024 by 768, 1280 by 960 and 1600 by 1200. And here we have quite a few choices for a native sharp pixel look on such LCD monitors. DOS is much more challenging, 320 by 200, 70 Hertz, four by three aspect ratio. These are all challenges for LCD monitors and scaling is the big issue. You will get an image that's not too bad, but it looks nothing like what we had on a CRT monitor. And here I have to say, if you're using uh, an emulator like DOSBox staging with a CRT shader, you will get an image that is nicer than you can get with a real machine on an LCD screen. As always, there are likely other choices and recommendations, and maybe there's a certain model that has a certain specific feature that is retro friendly. I know some of the BenQ monitors can do native one by one scaling for lower resolutions. That's quite interesting. If you have something to share, as always, please leave it down below in the comments. And yeah, apart from LCD monitors, Scaling external scalers is another solution. I haven't quite found something that's good for us retro PC gamers. The focus is usually on consoles, but you never know. It's just a matter of time when CRT monitors stop working and then we will have no choice. But it's a trend I've seen. Lots of tinkering and projects for the console retro community. Us PC gamers, not so much, but uh, I'm hoping to attract more people to this hobby, get you excited. There are fantastic retro PC games that uh, you should be checking out. And hopefully we can grow as a community, get more people involved, and then also more people with more brain power than me that can make some scalers for us. And yeah, it's an exciting hobby. And what I do with these videos is just make life a little bit easier, share some of my knowledge, some of my tips, and the topic of monitors, I don't see it discussed too often. Usually people use what they have lying around, but uh, as you found in the video, there are lots of uh, specific aspects to consider. And yeah, I think this is a good moment to end this video. I really appreciate you watching it. Give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and also check out our Patreon page if you want to support the channel there are some goodies for you like extended gameplay footage behind the scenes and also access to our Discord server. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.